What's going on Fishaholics? Beautiful Montauk morning today and uh, I have the morning off from work but I have work at 3 p.m. so I don't have a lot of time to fish but I have enough time to fish. It's like 9 a.m. so I'm gonna launch the kayak out we'll off Ditch Plains south side and try and catch some fish. And recently I actually entered the Ditch Witch Derby. I dropped off some trolling tubes to Grant who's the owner of the Ditch Witch and he asked me to join the Derby. It was like 15 bucks and it's season long so I was like why the heck not? So I can try and catch you know some striped bass, some bluefish, uh, fluke or sea bass to get them on the board. And right now I think is like a 15 inch change stripe on, a stripe on the board, a, a, you know a 4 inch change blue, a 4 inch change fluke and like a 2 inch change sea bass. So definitely some beatable uh, species. And I just picked up this uh, Berkeley Gulp 6 inch white grub. So I'm breaking down and uh, you know I'm, I'm going to the grub. You know I don't want to use bait and uh, you know I'm going to try something a little bit different than like pork rind or like a, a zoom super fluke. So hopefully that gets the job done and I'm going to put that on the back of my bucktail and hopefully that will draw up like a really big doormat fluke. And uh, that's what I'm really going to go for because I don't have a lot of time but I have enough time like I said to fish. And it's you know it's mid, it's almost midday. It's you know, getting getting kind of late in the morning. It's hot. It's humid. There's really no wind. So uh, let's just get out there and I don't know. Try and make something happen. Let's catch some fish. Woo! Woo! All right, guys. We made it out. Hit a few awesome ramps getting through the surf. That was pretty awesome. To be honest though, when I was like 14, I had a really, really bad wipeout right off the trailer park. Almost lost my van stall, I lost my boga grip. I was new to the kayak scene, so now like eight years later, I'm way more experienced. All the nerves are uh, kind of gone, so you got to become one with the ocean. Starting off with a spro, I think this is maybe one, one and a half ounces. Nice big profile. Time for the stinky, stinky six inch grub. I'm going to put that on the back of that bucktail. That's going to offer up a huge profile. Like, look at the size of that. This is like for stripers. But believe it or not, a six pounder will easily get this in his mouth. Look at that. That's a giant profile. Let's check out this action. Okay. Six pounder coming my way. Marking some bait down here along the bottom. Could have been bunker, kind of looks like bunker. This big profile is definitely going to weed out a lot of the smaller fish. Might even get a bass on it, you never know. Or a big giant blue, if he doesn't cut me off. Four pound sea bass. Only problem today is there's not much of a drift. Really slow drift. But I got reverse on the new Hobie. So I can always create my my own drift and do like a, a back troll. Oh, just had a hit right there. Just had a hit. It's probably a little fluke. Definitely a fluke or something. Something had the tail, probably. There he is. Oh, he came off. Lost him. Look at that, a little, little bugger. Chopping the end of the, the grub there. Oh, I'm getting rocked hard. A lot of fish here. They're just tearing up this long big grub so what I'm gonna do just to see what these fish are I'm gonna drop down a smaller spro but with some pork rind on it I think this is a little 3 8 ounce bucktail 
I'm only in 15 feet of water. I stopped right here. I was going to go out a little deeper, but I started marking a lot of bait. And uh, there's a lot of good, like, humps here. So it looks like some good structure or something. I don't know. Something's holding some bait here. There's a hit. There he is. Oh, are you kidding me? Ah, oh, dang sea robin. There's a fish. Oh my gosh, this fish crushed it on the drop. Oh my gosh. A tank sea robin. Look at the size of this thing. This thing's probably like four pounds. Uh, maybe not. Three pounds. I hate how they splash and get the camera all wet. Didn't even hook him in the mouth. Thought it was a big fluke. Oh, trigger fish. He just followed up my little bucktail. You know this water's warm if there's trigger fish here. On my uh, fish finder, it says that it's 69 degrees on the surface, so it's, you know, it's really warm. I'm out here in like 27 feet of water. If there's a lot of trigger fish here, you know, that's why I'm getting a lot of like small little tappy bites. But I'm not getting any like solid bites. Trigger fish have little tiny mouths. If I had a little piece of bait and a small hook, I could probably catch them. Wow, that sucks. Way too many porgies around here to jig these uh, Berkeley gulps. Or whatever, whatever's down there. Maybe it's triggerfish or small little sea bass. They're just like eating these things up. <sighs> oh my gosh, look what I caught, guys. A mackerel. I think it's a mackerel. Look at that right there. I'm gonna keep this actually because uh, it might it might make good bait in the future for like sharks or for bluefish or chunking for stripers. That is crazy. That mackerel came up and smashed this bucktail. I was just, I was real I was like ripping it up off the bottom. I wasn't even recording, and that guy crushed it. This, this mackerel is going crazy, holy Jesus. Holy moly. This mackerel is going insane. Too bad I wasn't up in, uh, up in Cape Cod in the canal. This would be like awesome bait right here. Try and bleed them out. That'll slow him down a little bit. It's a pretty good sized mackerel too. I was watching Shark Week and uh, supposedly, you know, right where I'm about, you know, fishing here is where they were catching some baby great whites. And if there's mackerel like this here and, you know, bunker and porgies and sea bass, you know, those baby great whites are gonna totally feed off that. Or even bluefish especially. There's a fish. That feels pretty good. Oh, dang scup. That's a monster scup. Oh my gosh. Look at the size of that one. That's a tank right there. I'll take that on a light little spinning rod. That's still pretty fun. Just had this fish come up and smack this. Another mackerel, no freaking way. 
a mackerel loaded here. These things fight pretty good for the, you know, for their size. Oh, we, Jesus. That was an epic fail. He like swung around, he was doing the spiral of death and then he got off and hit the kayak and he fell back in the water. Dang. There he is. I'm guessing pork chop. Oh my gosh, sea bass. Sea bass. Okay, sea biscuit. Stay in the boat. Oh my gosh, I'm marking them like crazy, whatever that is. Mackerel, sea bass, porgies. Came back into some shallower water. Got this uh, nice keeper sea bass. Look at this, I'm marking whatever it is like crazy. Not a big enough sea bass though. I need something that's like, I don't know, all close to three pounds. Or I think like two and a half. Whoever caught it, like uh, whoever caught a two and change sea bass, you know that's a pretty good one. All right, I'm done. I gotta start packing it up. So going through the surf, hands down, is always easier on the way out. But on the way in is usually when most kayakers have the most problems, or it's like the most nerve wracking, it's the most troubling thing. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take everything that is on top of the kayak and put it in, inside the kayak, basically so that if I do flip, I won't have to worry about anything. You know, I'll, I'll basically just go for a swim. And uh, to be honest, I really learned how to, uh, you know, kayak surf launch down in Jersey when, you know, I started doing uh, beach shark fishing. So I would do it at night and I would paddle out my baits and then I would actually, uh, you know, ride through the surf zone while it was like pitch black out. And uh, that's really how, you know, I learned how to, you know, ride the waves. All right, everything valuable is going inside the hatch here, either in the waterproof bag or just, you know, everything's waterproof. Gotta see if I can fit this GoPro pole in here. There we go. All right, I think we're ready to go. Everything's tied down or it's inside the kayak. Let's uh, hope everything goes well. Let's do it. All right, so what I've learned about kayak surf launching is that when you're going in, you want to pedal as hard and crazy as you can. You want to keep your momentum going. Doesn't matter if the wave is pushing you, you want to keep paddling. Keep paddling like crazy. Just don't look back. Just keep going. pretty shallow here. I could probably jump out and even walk the kayak in. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Got another wave coming. Keep paddling.
All right, Fishaholics, back at the car. Got about an hour to kill till I have to head to work. And uh, all in all, you know, really bad results going out there. I thought I was gonna at least get some fluke, which I didn't. Maybe at least get some sea bass, maybe a bluefish. But uh, at least I got one like keeper sea bass, and then I got a bunch of porgies. And I saw some trigger fish out there. I caught the mackerel. And uh, other than that, the surf launch went pretty well. Uh, you know, if you saw what I was doing, I was just pedaling my ass off, trying to keep that kayak lined perfectly with the nose towards the beach. You know, once if you if that kayak is off centered at all, then that just leaves an opening for a wave to just topple you. And um, you know, on the second wave, I almost got flipped over, but luckily I kept the paddle in the water on this side of the kayak, and uh, it actually just it swung me all the way around. So I was facing backwards towards the beach, which is like the worst possible way that, you know, the best thing to do then is either to jump out or to, uh, you know, pedal out and then make a Yui once you have a clearing. And uh, this little doohickey here, which holds the paddle, uh, actually got caught on my pants when I was jumping out of the kayak. And that's why the kayak flipped the first time. And then uh, towards the end, uh, you know, I was just being, you know, silly because I, I was trying to put my my, my wheels on in the water, which I do a lot of times like in calmer areas where I'm not getting hit continuously by waves. And I tried doing it there and uh, the waves told me, you're not doing it. So uh, then I got flipped over again, but everything valuable was pretty much in the kayak or it was strapped down, the Mirage Drive was strapped down and the net was, was strapped down on top of the Mirage Drive. And uh, even my GoPro on my head was, was tied down to my seat. The only thing that wasn't tied down was this mackerel here and somehow Miraculously, the mackerel stayed in the kayak after it got flipped over twice, but uh, I don't know. Hey, at least they got some cool bait. I wish I had the other one, then I would have had you know two good pieces of bait. I'm going shark fishing this weekend in uh, the big boat, but then you know if I don't, then I can always put this in the freezer and just pull it out and say uh, try and catch some brown sharks or maybe some duskies off uh, the south side or something because the water is like ridiculously warm. It's 70 degrees. It's it's really hot summer water, and supposedly there's a lot of sharks around. So uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and, uh, you know, never forget, live to fish, fish to live, and I'll see you guys in the next one.